Hello, everybody. Welcome to our two-day webinar. Um, I am Olivia Limi, Partner Program Manager at Benita Soft, and I am very pleased today to have our partner, Oris, uh, official partner uh, in Poland, and uh, actually implementing Benita BPM project uh, for several years now, uh, to be presenting this topic, uh, BPM Technologies for Effective Order Management. So where can we bring excellence to order management uh, with uh, BPM. So I'm going to pass the mic to Thomas right away so he can present us the agenda for today. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, actually, it's not only me today with us, but also Maciej Michalak and Paweł Gileski, who are project managers and experts. Maciej is an expert in Bonita BPM. Paweł is an expert on order management, uh, working with our key customers for a uh, for a number of years now. So if you have any questions later, either related to the BPM technology or related to the project, you can have them uh, here at your disposal, okay? Thank you, Olivia, for introduction. And uh, I'll let you say your slide later and start with uh, showing uh, one sentence of who we are, basically. We call ourselves a process house. So we are a software house, a corporate software house that specializes in business process management implementations or, in other words, on building business process applications. So we use this technology, a BPM technology, and in that way we turn key business processes into easy to use and change applications that help achieve measurable goals of organizations or customers. And that's basically what we do. And when we say key, we usually relate to core business processes that are related either to uh, working with customers or sales or uh, support of basic uh, operational activities. And uh, in fact, we um, collected experience mostly working with uh, large telecom companies, and that would be, uh, excuse me, most uh, major telecom companies here in Poland, and some of them large international telecom companies, but we also work for medical companies, uh, uh, insurance companies, uh, financial sector, media, and, and, and uh, production or uh, manufacturing. Uh, these are some statistics in Polish, but what you can see is that we there's a, a thousands of users of our business process applications. There's hundreds of those processes that we automate. Um, we have a, a huge number of uh, integrations because we do basically integration, business level integration projects. And the hundreds of thousands, actually it's over a million of instances a, a month that we that we process for our customers. Um, okay, and now Olivia about Bonita Soft. <laughs> yeah, a few words rapidly around Bonita Soft. So Bonita Soft is um, a software vendor. Uh, we are specialized in BPM and basically Bonita BPM is a platform to implement um, business application based on processes. Um, the company has been uh, attracting the interest of more than 1,000 customers around the globe as of today. Um, we decided uh, since the very beginning of our company to actually have a important strategy related with partners. Um, we have four offices around the globe, two in France and two in the United States. Um, but for all of the regions, uh, we are relying on a network of partners in order to bring uh, to the clients and the prospects locally uh, some um, experienced uh, people in our technology in order to implement the applications of the clients correctly. Um, one thing to keep in mind besides the number that you currently see on your screen is that um, everything is done in-house. Um, we are not outsourcing uh, whatever part of our product of Bonita BPM subscription and Bonita soft community. Um, and uh, we are um, basically mastering <laughs> both the uh, strategical and technological evolution of the product. So that would be for a few words uh, about Renisoft. <laughs> uh, thanks, Olivia. Um, OK, let's get back to business matters. So what I'm trying to show you here in this first slide is that at a very high level, business processes connect to the outside and the inside of the company. I hope you know that and I hope you see it on this large, uh, let's say, helicopter view of your organization or a company. Uh, today we're not going to talk about the relations that your company may have with regulator, maybe a little bit, 
not about the owners, not about the staff actually, because today if we want to talk about orders and order management, we should rather talk about customers and maybe your partners. Actually, this slide is adopted from BP Trends and Process Renewal Group. These are consultants who do the consulting um, for, uh, for large organizations on the very high level of what your company does and what is the strategic goal of your company. The company, therefore, is just portrayed here in the middle as the organization structure. You know that you have large organizations, large structures, and this is the inside of your company. Who is outside then and who is that most important for us today? Of course, it is, uh, it is your customer. So what do your customers uh, want from you? <laughs> they want, of course, your product and service. They want invoice for your service. They have may need a contract if, if, if it's a, at something big. And they, of course, order things from you. They offer you contract in return and, of course, payments. And uh, whatever is the channel that you contract your customers, it's call center, it's e-commerce, it's point of sales, whatever other channel they want to have all these things for themselves uh, run uh, and delivered smoothly on, on the high level. And then, of course, you have suppliers and service providers and partners, things, um, organizations and other companies that work with you in order to deliver that satisfaction to your customers. And those want an order from you, a payment, maybe uh, they offer you delivery invoice and on all kinds of services. And here we have some sort of warehouse, but we may also think of it, for example, as a courier service. Okay? So what happens is that the process goes through entire organization, usually. It is an end-to-end -end experience, so customer wants uh, his, his order delivered, and this is, uh, it only ends when the order is delivered, actually, and the customer is fully happy. It goes throughout your organization. There's a number of systems involved, information systems. There's a number of, uh, of different um, uh, people involved. So we have systems, we have people, and we have processes. And they're, when they're all seamlessly linked together, we're talking about managing this, this entire, entire process. Okay, so today I'm not going to largely debate and try to go into details uh, how would these processes look for telecommunication, how would that look for retail and distribution or manufacturing or other types of services, but we're going to talk a little bit on how to build and how to, how to organize um, uh, delivery of those goods, services, mixture of goods and services um, and, and all that to your customers. So if we look at a simple business process that we could call, well, process should probably not be called order management. Process should probably be called delivering goods, services to your customers, okay? Because at the end, these things are delivered to your customers in a way they expected. But order management, let's say, we would say a discipline where we're trying to manage this entire ordering, so the entire process that starts and ends on your customer. So what I might be doing, selecting goods, selecting order parameters. Uh, your sales department may have to order, to verify the order, accept it, somehow ask warehouse to collect goods and prepare packages, ship them to, cor to your customers, for example. And then a courier could be delivering that, and the order would be finally accepted, and the customer would be happy. Okay, and that would be really, really, really simple. But the life is actually way more complicated. And usually we put on top of that things like stock management and ordering from a range of suppliers, third-party services or fees. You deliver a good, but you also deliver some kind of service. Coordination of delivery and services. So these two things come together. You know, these services could be financial services, for example, loans for an order from your customer. They could be loyalty programs and partnership that you have to involve in the process. There are some points that you have to mark somewhere on some, uh, somebody's loyalty card, for example. That's actually things, there are all things that happen to us on our, on our daily basis, projects. Various payments methods and procedures, sometimes money return procedures. It's not as easy as to collect money and return money is unfortunately not as simple both ways. And sometimes reverse logistics of things that kids are, uh, go to a certain destinations, but then they are relocated to others. And you have multi-channel differences to availability, delivery, and services. Let's say 
a certain good or service is available through a certain channel, but it's not through the other. You can take it from a point of service, but point of sales, but you cannot get it online or you cannot get it from call center. <clears throat> Sometimes services require some sort of activation, and that's a typical thing for, for telecoms, of course, like provisioning, billing, phone number transfers, and other things, whatever it is your business about, there may be some kind of billing, for example. And then you have uh, geographic variations in order to availability or options for delivery. And of course, warranties that may differ and may work differently for different customers. So yeah, it is simple, but it may not be that simple. So what we have, we have challenges in order management. And these challenges, the simple challenges for a simple process would be customer wants more options for delivery, for example. Something comes to him too late. Did you have situations where three different providers deliver an order and only the first that comes is accepted? All that are too late are going to return to you. And that's not nice, but it happens. And then things get undelivered, basically, for a variety of reasons. Or they get the, the goods are returned. Sometimes the returns um, are quite a, quite a problem for, for, for customers. Okay, and of course there, there is always a problem of frauds on all kinds of um, you know, unexpected activities from our uh, customers. So when we think about business challenges, goals and KPIs in order management, here are some, and these are real things, things that we see on a daily basis. There are manual errors and delays. There is work duplication. There are returns. There are, of course, peaks of service demands and high costs of delivery. And on the other hand, we have fluctuations in customer satisfaction with delivery, speed, comfort, predictability, and everything else that is actually challenging for you. So the goals of our customers and the goals that we see in life, not only with our customers, but also with many companies that we visit and we advise or we do business analysis on their processes. So we see them, we see them in action. The goals are to improve the overall delivery efficacy. That could be increased delivery effectiveness in certain places, decrease the number of errors, decrease the delivery cost, which sometimes is a pain and sometimes if you operate on low margins, may be critical. Then increase customer satisfaction, so shorten delivery time, increase personalization of delivery, acceptable time slots and other things, everything that is related to the comfort of your customers. So KPIs, it could be a number of undelivered versus total order numbers. It could be a number of services, meetings, criteria, so the criteria versus a total number of deliveries. Average delivery cost per whatever order. Then, of course, customer satisfaction should be measured and correlated to certain events. Average delivery time of a particular provider uh, can be monitored against average uh, of all providers. These are actual numbers, and this is a question, what is your goal? Okay. What would be your desired value then for things like cancel orders, return orders, or last deliveries? Are you, help, are you totally happy with 20%? Are you still on two? Or would you like to have it on point two? Same with return orders. Is 5% satisfying for you? Is 0.05 of last deliveries satisfying for you? All these questions basically come to, to a point of how would these numbers affect the bottom line of your company, the financial statement of your company at the end of the year? If it's 20, if it's two, if it's point two. What you say is each of these problems should be, should be addressed by, by continuous improvement. And that is true. That's what we will talk about. And of course, is it even possible uh, to, to, to set these goals and, and, and to hit them without the digitalization of the process? Is your process going to use things like uh, Internet of Things? Is it going to be drones that will deliver your packages? Is it going to be robots? and we're working in a warehouse, is it going to be something else that will actually make your customer happier than ordering from a competition? Okay, so if you think about solution, again, solution for a very basic delivery process that could involve from the operational management perspective, things uh, that happen when everything goes well, and these are order verification and validation. Let's use some anti-fraud tools to detect problems. Let's integrate 
that with, with data providers. What about uh, data about your customers? Uh, in the area of warehouse process coordination, maybe we should be merging multiple customer orders into one package. Maybe we should register shipped products. Maybe we should print documents, contracts, price lists, and align them with your, with your deliveries. Assigning way bills, support, preparing, and physical shipping of the package. And of course, we should be trucking, trucking everything. And then if things get tricky, or as I say, when problems happen, <laughs> we should be handling returns easily and easily re, uh, resend your packages. We should probably, or you should probably, automatically handle the redispatchments, changing tracking numbers. Is the turnover of undelivered shipments back to stock? There are even companies that are specializing in turning over return products, right? Um, managing returns, cash refunds through bank accounts, deposits, postal money transfer, just for one product, or maybe because it was broken, damaged, wrong product. Maybe warranty was void when it was returned. Maybe the customer wants a return, but only for the service. And that's what he wants to cancel. Maybe also a product, maybe just product return, etc. Cetera, et cetera. A number of problems and numbers of challenges. Um, what happens when, when the parcels are lost? We should be easily recalling lost parcels for audit and SLI execution with your partners, sending notifications to ensure SLI. Uh, maybe we should archive signed documents to make sure that things went, went correctly with, you, with your partners. Okay? And of course, depending on what you do and what your industry is, you may have to meet regulatory requirements. Is this, uh, is this a problem? Well, it is a problem because it poses a lot of costs and a lot of uh, operational effort to meet uh, the, these in, uh, regulatory requirements, such as, uh, for example, the food or pharmaceutical industries have a lot of transportation, handling, uh, warehousing requirements. Uh, okay? Of course, you have to stick to customer rights. They have a legal right to do things like returning products. And that should be available, and that should work, and should never put your, put your company or organization in trouble when you are not meeting them. So you, you may not know what's next. You may not know what's the next regulation, but you should be, should be actually ready for them. Uh, in my country, for example, in Poland, uh, there was a new regulation a couple of years ago that imposed right on, um, that imposed on, on uh, medical representatives of pharmaceutical companies to track every single package, every single medicine package what happened with it, even if though it has never been distributed through, through, through the pharmacies. So if he was offering a, a physician a free, uh, a free drug to, for, for, for any reason, every single, every single box of that drug should be tracked. And that's the law, <laughs> okay? So before that, medical representatives could be carrying packages of those in the trunks of their company cars. Not anymore. Every single has to be tracked. Uh, so you never know what kind of regulation is going to come to your, your industry. So when you look from the user perspective, you may think of, uh, of, of friendly, friendly screens and friendly applications that could, uh, uh, conser uh, that could contain order parameters, relevant actions and contexts in a contextual way, comments, comments about delivery time, about the product, customer data, anything that can help you to do your job better. Of course, you may design or use uh, predefined detection of fraud patterns and order flow through your application integrated into your process. And maybe your solutions order have uh, orders history and information about uh, shipments that contain more than one product or service. Uh, and finally, uh, search widgets, task lists, and order data records. And maybe, maybe, you also want to develop some, uh, from a user perspective, your super sophisticated and constantly optimized mega search. It means you would like to have insight if into your process, into your order delivery process, the way you want to see it, and the way that will be informative and that will allow you to do next best actions, do uh, improvements. Okay, from the architectural challenges in order management, what you have and what we see is the overall class's complexity. It's just countless of variants and scenarios, some of them I mentioned before. You need intuitivity and deep insight into processes for all actors. So every screen, every insight into the process should probably be customized to, to the role you, you have in that process. Uh, coordination of multiple internal and external processes, systems, and people. Uh, 
and that could be that could be thousands, uh, that could be uh, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 systems sometimes that, that takes part in that. So in that way you need numerous integrations and you need scalability in many, many aspects. And of course, meeting the data demand of business stakeholders and analyst teams during change. So you need to collect data of how we work, not only where is the order or which database contains information about the order, but how did it get there? How did it get there? So we can actually uh, trace whatever we've done, how we've done, and what, what, what better can we do to do the job. Now about the solution choices. So when you think about your order management system, your order management application, your, your dream application, you may think of off the shelf, which is of course fastest option, in, at least in theory. Um, it will never meet all the business requirements. It, the big chance is it will be rigid, difficult and expensive to customize, just, just like every off the shelf, commercial off the shelf solution. And it will probably put you in high dependency on the solution provider. Then you have, uh, the, the, on the other spectrum, you have custom development. So let's build this application from scratch. Okay, it's, uh, of course it offers ultimate flexibility. Everything can be coded in. But it requires also long and expensive, expensive development cycle. Uh, this may be difficult to maintain and upgrade. Uh, a lot of work. Make sure that when you, when you build new functionalities, you're not gonna, you're not gonna uh, affect some others. And, and lacks agility to adapt with changing business needs. Everything is done, everything can be done, but everything is long and expensive. So we claim, and not only claim, but we see that leading organizations are actually those that adapt to change. Even if there are large organizations, if they are able to deliver things and, 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 and adopt uh, fast, they are actually leading. <laughs> Our our solution or our proposition for that is a BPM-based application built on a, on a BPM application platform. In this case, Bonita BPM. What you can do with that, you can do truly living applications. So instead of building things that are static, rigid, hard-coded, hard to adapt and easy to break, you can actually try to build something that is living and it's dynamic and it's real-time and it's adaptable through, through many aspects. Uh, how, how are you doing it or how are we doing it? Uh, in order to build a living application with Bonita BPM, you can separate business logic from business data and user interfaces. And this is just a very, very high, high level separation uh, which allows you to for more flexibility. So the business logic would be processes, connectors, scripts, actors, rules. So how are we going to process certain types of orders uh, and not the others, and then events and parameters. Business data, business, business objects and, and, and data model, a consistent data model for the entire process, all the data that we need to perform the end-to-end -end process. And of course, user interfaces that will change frequently and that will change a lot because of the, of the user demands. And that could be mobile, web pages, forms, look and feel of those menus, analytics that should be implemented into the process to actually show certain data in a more friendly way. It's all that you need to, to build it. Who are the heroes here? <laughs> of course, uh, everybody. Of course, the process owners. Of, co of course, those who understand customers very well. Of course, those who set requirements. But bottom line, a lot of work is done by developers. So people who are responsible to actually deliver this work in application. Uh, what they can get with us is the graphical tooling for developers. So you do more by drag and drop and more by graphic design rather than, than coding. You can add your own code and extend the tooling and that's what really sets developers free. So when things that are visual um, are no longer no longer useful, you can always extend and add the tooling. And of course, you can make modifications on the fly. So certain things um, can be done pre-deployment, but some of them can be done even post-deployment, so when the application is in production. How it works, um, uh, it's got a visual uh, tool, it's called uh, Bonita Studio, where you can create powerful processes, model, uh, model using BPMN, define, store, and query business data, and do many, many, many other things that are needed. 
uh, when you build user interfaces or when developers build user interfaces, they can also use uh, a lot of tooling uh, that would be design user interfaces for any device and interact with process and business data um, using, uh, using uh, visual tools like this. Things can be changed easily, so you can adapt and update applications as you need and identify and solve errors on the fly and change. Uh, what you end up with uh, is uh, native execution of processes and tasks, process execution follow-up, so whenever in the middle of a process you need to start other actions and act, uh, execute certain procedures or other processes, you can do that. You have business data that is uh, presented to you in the form that is uh, most, uh, most uh, sufficient and that will be highlights rather than business data and of course insightful graphics and analytics all that can be built into the application when it's needed. Uh, the user interfaces finally can be personalized in the look and feel, a lot of powerful templates available and, and uh, multiple levels of pages and menus so in order to adapt that application to your, to your needs. Okay, uh, this is uh, also a very, very brief view of the architectural perspective, so maybe, maybe IT here might be, might be a bit more interesting. And without going into details of that, what's most important is this architecture is actually realizing the concept of separating, separating front-end data and logic. So uh, in the middle, you have all the components responsible for, uh, for uh, business logic implementation, it's of course, with the Bonita BPM Studio clients uh, where you can define everything. Then you have a business data model, uh, business data which is uh, modeled and, and again used through Bonita BPM, but of course some of the data will be found in the outside systems that have to be integrated. So in that way you have data and of course the front end. And there is a number of options that you can choose in order to build um, this application for particular actors or for particular participants of the project. What are the benefits of this approach? Um, first, you have a shorter time to market and lower costs. You boost developer productivity. You have more agility to, to change and continuously evolve. So you can, for example, in an affordable way, adapt to regulatory requirements and customer rights. You can uh, reduce the workload related to repeatable and configurable aspects of the process. And as I said before, you have a number of, of those processes that are of sub-processes that are almost like the others, but they have to be changed uh, somehow. We have to deal with certain parts of our order delivery a little bit different than we did before, uh, and, and it's important to, to do it easily. Uh, of course, reduce development cost in comparison with any, for example, enterprise herb class systems. So in order to change that, uh, something that was built to be changed that's of course that's of course easier. The usability and that that way you would really like to build anything that users want and need. So personalized view for every actor and of course automatic report data aggregation and presentation. Uh, it would be uh, if you if you do it that way you also boost collaboration between business and IT. First you have a common vocabulary which is BPMN and other collaborative graphical modeling uh, tools in the environment and of course business rules management that you can separate from the process and that you can manage, manage uh, separately. So any key configurational detail, even as complex as for example a delivery company selection matrix for a certain region uh, and, uh, or, or the type of good you're delivering to be exposed to business this, people who decide on a business, on a business side uh, to simply read it from, from configuration store. Uh, from the IT perspective, uh, you may enjoy development velocity and decoupled architecture. Uh, a lot of out-of-box and native capabilities to accelerate development, for example, business process and uh, logic and uh, user interface. Of course, agility to change and continuously evolve. So you're building flexible and fast, uh, easily to adapt business requirements. Uh, let's say you would like to uh, implement a complicated business logic into order processing and process path selection or fraud detection and other business rules such as the, for example, managing courier companies. 
uh, uh, that actually have very, very different requirements in terms of integration. And, and of course, they, have, they, they call their processes, they call the stages of delivery different, each and every company. But you would like, from your perspective, you'd like to have a, a single abstract and intuitive view of the whole delivery process, no matter who is doing that, which company, which provider. And that's just, just an example, because the, the complication here be, could be much, much bigger. Uh, there will be a lot of integration in a project like that. So you need out of box connectors for SAP databases and uh, other software. But you also need support of open technologies and standard. So you can, you can uh, easily integrate with everything that you need. So uh, that way you can eliminate error prone manual data manipulation. Things become more integrated and the cost of the integration goes down. And you have automated data distribution in world systems. Continuity and performance. Uh, we'll not go here in the details, but what you really need is support for clustered architecture and uh, ability to recover from errors. And it would be nice to have a, a robust engine which can support high volumes if you need them and if you have them. Okay, so the key benefits for BPM technology for order management would be develop applications faster and improve developer productivity, boost your teams, allow them to build more for less, maintain application easier and more affordably with live updates, empower your users, build anything they want. If out of the box, if drop and drop is not enough, then switch to code and using contracts on AP or APIs of your business process engine, build anything they want so they're happy. And of course, improve business efficiency with rich monitoring and reporting. Build any useful data that you have or people may use in your process into the application itself. Is it the detecting the errors in delivery? Is it, is it looking at SLAs? Is it looking at things that are missed? Is it looking at returns and what to do with them? Anything that could be useful inside the process. Conclusions. We think that automating order management is, is a very important step to digitalization of order management, to putting more value in that and putting your company or organization ahead of your competition through reduced operational costs, increases customer, increases customer satisfaction, uh, and, and actually uh, eventually building competitive advantage. You can do that through enhanced data consistency among domain systems, real-time reporting, insights into internal and suppliers processes, and of course respond rapidly to business reality, reality change. Okay, uh, I don't know how long was that, but uh, <laughs> in a Q&A section, you can, you can ask us, contact us directly, ask us questions now, use email, whatever is convenient for you, and then on the, on the, on the side, um, you can contact me or, or you can contact Philippe Lecoutier from, from Bonita Soft. Uh, and of course now I'm open to, or we are all open to Q&A session, okay? Go ahead. Thank you very much, Thomas, um, for this presentation. Uh, I really appreciate you took the time as a partner, uh, trusted partner of Vinita Soft to, um, to, to share with, uh, with the crowd here your, your expertise on order management excellence. Um, I've been checking in in the chat of uh, go to webinar and it seems there's no question for the moment so what I propose to the audience is obviously to use those emails uh, that Thomas just shown on the screen uh, in order to contact us if you have any question after uh, you've seen uh, and participated to that webinar so if there is no question uh, I'll suggest we thanks a bit again everybody that was present online with us today and thanks again our partner Oris for delivering this uh, this webinar today thank you again Thomas thank you thank you our listeners and Olivia and uh, have a good day bye bye, -bye everyone <laughs>